So hello everybody, Convert with Moss 9 is already out and it brings two support for two new formats, AIFF as well as Ableton Sampler and also their Simpler instrument. Let's first have a look at AIFF. I looked more into this format since most of the Ableton files use as a sample sources AIFF files instead of WAV files. Yeah, I noticed that also AIFF can contain the same metadata as WAV files, which means you can also have a complete instrument, multi-sample setup contained only in AIFF files. But if these are not present, you can still use the detection via the name. So the name of the samples, if, for example, if they contain note names information, this does work as well. And the settings look a bit complex, but they're actually identical to what you can configure with the WAV files. And if you did not test that already, take a look at my first videos, which explains this algorithm and how it works and how you need to configure it. But normally it works out of the box with the default settings. And it's also explained in detail in the Convert with Moss manual. So by the way, AIFF, I found it pretty interesting looking into that format that the name actually means audio IFF and IFF is a standard for interchange format files developed by Electronics Arts and also other standards based on this one. For example, the Propeller Has Reason SXT file, which I supported in the last version already, is based on that standard as well. So I thought quite interesting. So like WAV files are based on RIF chunks, so these AIF files are based on IFF chunks. So, <laughs> okay, for the nerds. So, but let's look at the more interesting thing, which is Ableton Sampler. So the idea of this tool is not to infringe copyright in any way. So the Ableton Sampler factory files, they use encrypted AIF files, so compressed files, which use a specific propriety algorithm of Ableton themselves. So this one is not supported, so we cannot use this tool to convert the factory files out of Ableton, but you can convert all your own files with your own samples you created, as well as get other samples into Ableton. I'm saying that because now I can also detect compressed AIFF files, so the so-called AIFC files, C for compressed, are now also detected. And if it's a common algorithm, it might even work. I don't have example files for that, but this might work as well. But enough of talking, let's have a look. So I chose here again my pad folder, which I always use for testing, which is in contact format and assemble these myself. And let's create some Ableton files for that. And let's go start and also let's cancel it straight away because I first want to show you and explain you something that the format is quite complex, which you need to have to put it in your library. So Ableton is only able to load the sampler presets together with samples if they're in a correct place in their user library. And this needs to look like that. So here is a user library here on Windows. It's contained in Documents, Ableton User Library. I guess it's similar on Mac OS as well. And in your user library, you find two folders. One is a samples folder and one is a presets folder. And presets contain all your presets for all your different effects and instruments, MIDI effects and instruments. You can then find here the sampler folder. And if you open that, it's empty. I don't have any sampler presets in there. So it's better for testing now that we have that empty. And the samples are, if we go up here, contained in the samples folder and there everything is flat in one folder, which is pretty bad, but I tested and found out that you can put them as well in subfolders. This is working as well. And Convert with Moss creates this whole file structure so you can simply drop it into the user libraries folder and you will have the correct paths already. So why I'm telling you everything about that is here we have this output folder, which you see created already this structure with presets, instruments, sampler, and here you have the converted files. And the same thing is with samples imported. And here are now the samples and they are structured here nicely in subfolder so you don't have a total mess into this samples imported folder so you can basically simply copy over these two folders 
But what I actually wanted to show you is if you go one level up, so if we would say we convert your star name with pad, it will create additional subfolders if this flag is on, which is a bit problematic for that format because then you will have for each of the subfolders the structure inside of the subfolder and then you would need to copy all of them for the different subfolders. But if you just want to copy such two, you should disable this option and then everything ends up in these two folders and you can simply copy them over to the library. So let's do that. So here is a library again. I simply move over, over these two folders and then the presets will be here in the presets instrument sampler. So here we have them and the samples are also in the imported folder in these subfolders. But never let's be careful with doing so. If the copy system tells you there are, for example, already files in there, so be careful not to overwrite or kill anything in your Ableton user library. So let's have a look at Ableton. So here is the user library. Here are the presets, instruments, and there is a sampler folder. And let's have a look in there and it already detected these new files. So let's load the sound. So, and if we take a look at it, you see all the samples, all the key ranges and velocity settings are correct. We need to mention that a sampler is a pretty simple sampler here. It does not have any notion of groups or groupings or things like that. And also the pitch envelopes as well as a filter is only on a global level. So it is applied to all of the samples. What you will get is so filters get converted to filter envelope, but in the source files, there was no filter in there. And also the pitch envelope. And that's basically it. So the source file should have only one filter setting and single envelope settings for the whole patch, then it works nicely. Besides that, you might need to do and apply some tuning. I also have another sound here loaded. And as you hear also the envelope gets adjusted here already from the settings. Also new in Convert Mars 9 is that the slopes are applied, which we don't have here in this default setting. But if the source material has a slope, which is supported by some formats like S of Z, for example, then this will now also be applied in Convert with Moss 9. So just to show you also the other direction, since I don't have any presets here stored in Ableton, we just give a try at the core library and then you will also see that the encrypted files cannot be converted and you see the error output. Let's just try to convert this to SFZ and it will now run over the whole core library. So we'll also get errors if it finds ADV or ADHG files or nothing at all. Ableton, here we go, wrong setting. So if you run this over the whole core library, you will see that we also get errors that there is no sampler in this preset file because ADV and ADG are presets for all of the different devices in Ableton, not only sampler. So convert with MOS will check if there is a sampler device in it. Also, if you use ADG files, which can contain a rack and in this rack contains several sampler instances, all of these presets will also be extracted and individual instruments will be created. So, and as you see, the AI files here are compressed with the SOWT algorithm. And I noticed if you try to convert a pack, a so-called Ableton pack, it's compressed with another specific Ableton format, so you cannot convert these files. Nevertheless, you can contain your personal samples, which is the main idea of the tool. You can convert them to Bitwig, for example, which is a good way to go. <laughs> But okay, for sure, you can also have new content for Ableton if this floats your boat. And tell me what you think about it. If you like it, use it. And until next time, make some funky music.